Hey, welcome back to this next exciting episode of Disciples Liberation. And a couple of things to point out. We are honoured with the Elven Alliance here. So uh, units of Elven Alliance gain two morale, which is good. Uh, obviously, we're friendly with the legions of the Damned. But more importantly, we've got a companion quest here, which is Ormriel's Revenge. So we need to go and find the former chieftain of Rylan, who we spoke to before, who gave us the secret entrance. So that is what we are going to be doing today um so there's the hut Aviana. Omiel brings the party to an abrupt halt you turn to see her staring into the distance something's bothering you again we're going to be choosing these ones all the time i don't like the look in your eye if we should turn back tell me we are near to the ice wall, and beyond that, Chieftain Ryloth. I can't see it, but I trust you. I don't have your elven eyes or a Muriel, but if you say so, I believe you. There must be some way to get past it. Omiel looks momentarily unsure. You imagine that it's rare for her to lack knowledge of these lands. It is a secret of the Rai dynasty, unknown to the Ore. Although I'm confident that once there, we will uncover the secret. She stares downwards. Her palm opens and closes several times. We need to hurry on. Rylan? If you tell me Rylan is trustworthy, I'll accept it. But I have my doubts. She was a chieftain for centuries. That does not happen without wisdom and an eye for what is best. Besides, we are both feral elves. Cowan. I'm still planning on getting our revenge on Cowan once this thing is out of you. As am I, he shall pay for his crimes with his life. She raises her palm to her mouth. If you are listening, Cowan, do not mistake my words. You will die. Let's go then. Okay. Let's interact. Before you, sta before you stand, a wall of ice, smooth, shining with a fierce blue glow. For some reason my mouse is starting to play silly buggers. You jerk your head towards your companion. To Ryla An, you mean? Yes, she lives just beyond the ice, but there is something else here. Omiro takes a deep sniff in the air. A stench lingers, one of betrayal. Touch the ice, we need to pass. What does it smell like? I've known that stench before. Ormriel gives you a look. The smell of an elf who is due an unclean death. Cowan? Are you sure? Yes. Though how recently, I cannot say. There must be a way through. Hmm. Arrows would not penetrate it, and my steel would barely scratch its surface. Oriel leans in a little closer. As the words leave your lips, you jump back in shock at the sudden fire engulfing Ormiel's hand. Ormiel, what's going on? Let me help you, Ormiel. No! Stand back! With her other hand, the Elven warrior pushes the party away. The, the power! I can feel it coursing through my veins. You're gonna lose your hand! No! I will help you. I'm going to save you, whether you like it or not. I said no. Too fast for eyes to follow. Ormiel's free hand whips out and strokes you in the chest, sending you stumbling backwards. I'm trying to help. You're gonna die, Ormiel! And then, within an instant, the pain etched across Ormiel's face subsides. The flame remains burning bright, as if a star is being birthed. A moment later, the flame and the light vanish. Where stood a towering wall of blue is now only an empty space. Beyond the space, a dwelling is glimpsed. Help her, Coruscant. Coruscant, please see to her wounds. Let me help, Ormeriel. I can heal you. No, I, I do not. No. Thank you, Coruscant. But I am not truly hurt. Ormeriel offers her hand. There are aged scars of a warrior and a thin line of an artifact's forceful insertion, but of the flame, nothing remains. 
Curious. The binding within your flesh is powerful. The Tarak Law. We Sundancers learn of many magics, including this. However, we knew only that it is a device for binding, for a captor to watch and torment as they please. It seems that there is more to our understanding. We should remove it. And I, are we all right? Did you blame me for this? I'd understand. Question marks first. I was angry, but only for a moment. This is Cowan's doing, not yours. If anything, I'm grateful to you and am in your debt. There is no we debt. We are equal, Ormiriel. We are equal and equals, Aviana. Thank you. What else do you know, Bagthal? You seem like you know more about the Tarak lore. Only its reputation. They are always paired, a master and a postulant. Although I have never heard of it granting power. Nor I. But we're still going to try to remove it. Cowan gave it to me for a reason. Romeo glares, glare fills the space between you and her. Even now, Cowan's eyes are no doubt upon us. Then let's find those eyes and cut them out. Okay, let's go to the hut. The party approaches a wooden building nestled at the foot of the mountains. It's neither grand nor majestic, yet it radiates a brutal physicality against the surrounding snow and ice. This is Rylaan's home? It is. What's the plan? I assume there's more to the plan than knocking on the front door? As opposed to sneaking around the back? No, Rylan is a wise woman and her chieftain days are behind her. There is no animosity here. But the stench. Ooh, the same strange odor. We should be wary. I am always wary, as should you be. Ah, yes, of course. Thanks. Look around. You take a moment to truly observe the area. It is desolate. There are a few plants poking out through the snow, and of which are, are frail, sickly yellow. A little different to home, eh? It is a hard life in the mountains, and yet we survive. Stay behind me. You move towards the wooden door, but before entering its reach, the door opens with a slow, loud creak. Watch out! From the open doorway emerges a shadow. For an instant, the shadow is large and looming, until it shrinks to reveal a hunched woman wrapped in furs. Aviana, why are you... Rylan's gaze moves past your shoulder. Ormiria. Watch her reaction. The warrior's elf face loses some of its harshness in Rylan's presence, a sure sign of the freedom now within grasp. Chieftain Rylan, it is good to see you. And you, princess. You are free of your prison. I am. I have Aviana here to thank for that. Not a problem. It was no problem at all. A pleasure, in fact. Well, I am happy that you have both emerged alive. And how are you, Ormiriel? Not too diminished to fight, I hope. Never, chieftain. Bonds may hold me, but will never break me. I am ready to claim my freedom in its entirety, but for two problems. Ormiriel extends her hand, palm open and facing up to the open sky. Snowflakes fall softly around the thin scar where the artifact forced its way inside. A Tarak lore? Uh, I'm going to stand back and watch. Yes. I have been passed from captor to captor. And now I am bonded to another. Can it be removed? The old woman's eyes flicker between Ormiel's face and hand. It is possible. But the pain will be unlike anything you have endured before, princess. You would never fully heal. Such artifacts are not designed to be safely removed. She hesitates, turning away from the party 
Her face now hidden from sight. I can handle it, Chieftain. This is dangerous. You've had your fair share of pain, I know. As have I. But this thing, the Tarot Law. Ormiel places her other hand on your shoulder. I can handle it. Then come in, Princess, and let us prepare. It will require much time. Aviana, it would be best if you return at a later time. What do you think? What would you prefer, Ormiel? Ormiel's entire demeanor softens. I would appreciate it if you and the others remained here. We will stay. Captive freedom, captive freedom. I cannot help but think that the cycle will continue. Doesn't trust her. We will break it one thing at a time, offer a synthetic look. Let her speak. Yeah. Or Muriel, I am living proof of freedom. As am I. Together we will ensure yours. Absolutely. We will break it one thing at a time. We will break it. Will it. Break the cycle. You'll have true freedom. Of that, I promise. I hope you are right. You give a gentle smile to your companion, and then behind her, a scowl on the face of Rylan, gone in a span of a blink. Everything okay? What's wrong, Rylan? Nothing. Nothing. You must leave. And Ormiriel enter. The magic does not work well in the company of many. Yeah, she's got a something behind her. I'm staying. I'm going to stay with Ormiriel, and that's final. The old woman sighs and turns back to Ormiriel. You said you had two problems before being able to truly claim your freedom. The first was the Tarak Law, and the second. Ormiel opens her mouth to speak, but Rylands continues without pause, her face hardening. The second problem, princess, was Cowan. The rightful heir to these lands. My son. Oh dear. We can work this out. No. Surely we can work through this. He's the reason we're in this mess. Walk through this, pathetic girl. You are no better than her. The stomping of boots on snow from behind the group arrives swiftly and suddenly. Spinning, you see a mass of figures, all armed and prepared for war. No! Omiel screams in pain, gripping the hand corrupted by the tarot claw with her other. There is no time to come to her aid as battle breaks out around you. A familiar voice breaks through the sudden din. Omeriel, it is time for you to finally die. Okay, level 14s. Defeat Cowan or Muriel must survive. Okay. Or Muriel. Cowan, you will regret walking the path to bring you here. You will regret ever leaving your prison, Princess. Of the honor. I expected better. But no matter. Cowan turns away from you with an exaggerated nonchalance, as if you no longer exist. Bow before me, Mary. Recognize my authority over these lands, and I shall spare you. You have no authority here. Cowan twists his wrists, the Master Tarot Claw wrapped around it, glistening in the snowfall. Uh. Through gritted teeth, Ormiel finds her way through the pain. You will never control me. You will never rule these lands. Stand and die. Frost power. Potent venom. Rusted weapons which slow them up. Alright, we're gonna... Let's hold fire here. attack there no right so as you can't attack 
Let's do this. Mainly for her. Come. Let us do this. Come down. Come through. Doesn't matter about being weakened here. Can't quite heal. Claw keeps hit killing her, but it's fine. We shall defer. We shall kill. Your flesh is too soft. You dead? Master assassin, my ass. Ormiel stands beside Karen's twitching body. She reaches down, pauses for only the span of a heartbeat, and grabs Karen's wrist. The turret claw is pulled free. The air begins to shimmer around Ormiel, becoming hazy and fractured. A piece of the turret claw breaks away to hang suspended before her eyes. She reaches out, hypnotized by the tiny, delicate-looking ball. The shimmering glow, more forceful from and from the ball, a yellow light begins to glow as blinding as the sun. The light expands over Ormriel, engulfing the elven warrior princess. It continues still, riding the air, flowing with it, joining with it, until the entire battlefield becomes bathed in gold. Then, nothing. Only Ormriel standing tall, radiating with power. Cool. Some leather pants. You stand beside Ormiel, looking out at the bodies decorating the battleground. The snow is red with blood. Surrounding the sun dancer is a newfound aura of power. The air around her feels alive somehow. You're hurt. Uh, we almost lost you there. I am good, I believe. I admit that I feel stronger than before. The two devices have combined inside me. Their power fills me. I'm not sure this is safe. You feel in control now, but are you sure you will be? Yes. She regards her single word for a moment. Do not mistake me, Aviana. This is new and unexpected, but I can say without a doubt that it is part of me. It belongs to me and I to it. We are one now. She looks at the house, the place where hope turns to treachery. You stand beside her. As for Rylan, she is no longer a concern of mine. Whether she lives out her life in anger or sorrow, or finds her end by your blade, it is a choice I leave to you, Aviana. She lives. We have seen enough death for today. Let us leave her to deal with her regrets. I'd actually like to have killed her, but the playthrough we're going is the one ring, and that's the one ring we are doing. So be it. You both turn away from Ryland's house for the final time, only to find an empty space amongst the bloody snow. Cowan is gone. What? 
What? Wasn't he dead? He is as slippery as he is treacherous. We shall meet with him again. Of that I have no doubt. You too feel the truth of Ormil's words. You and Cowan are not yet done. Thanks, Child of Vengeance. More Elven Alliance. We've got Melt Ice. Frost Steel Longsword. Power and Primal Resistance. So that's just got more power. We'll do it as part of a quest chain. Uh, da, da, da. Our storage is full as well. Right. Take a look at the map here. So we got a f ice wall there and an ice wall here. Let's use the rest of this episode to take these down. Yeah, mum. Got some wood and the chest. Contains chain mail, which again, probably not as good. It's not. It's getting there. And there is this. Which has chain leggings. Strength and physical resistance. Map. So we could come up here. I don't think there was anything else that was blocked. Doesn't look like it. We've got a lootable treasure chest up here. Huh. The front door has gone. Nothing we can do there. Some leather boots. And I think that is all that she said. Let's see anything else. I think that's what's making that noise, right? So I think we are done. So let's head on out. First things first, we'll gather our resources. Got all of them. Oh, we're missing a primal essence one. Which is to here, I think. Yeah, I need I need someone to be able to do that. Okay, I'm not gonna say anything. Right, okay, let's head back up. And Elven, let's upgrade here. See what we can get. We can get an Arctic Dryad. So it's HP, grants primal protection, it's chilled. 
Minus one movement and 15% minus. Agility back line, regain. Want that regain. Train him up. All right, let's phase this out. So we've got from here Temple of Seasons. Don't have the mana tree. Add it in. I need a tier three castle. Can I get a tier three castle? No. So we can get a scout. Summons arrow of pure icy energy, dealing primal damage, inflicts chilled, and then just a physical arrow. And the wear leopard. Fix afraid on enemies, grants agile, quick and strong to allies. Fix bleeding. Each time the wear leopard is attacked by an enemy adjacent to him, strikes him back. Hmm. Not sure about them. Unit wise, I've got this dryad. So you do quick and strong. The ally that's. Yeah, let's do that. That's. Unvalued protection and evasive. So now we've got regain to allies until the end of the battle. So. That's pretty decent, I'm not going to lie. And I want to get a Banshee in. Uh, marketplace, resource wise. That needs tier 3. Mercenary wise, we've got a Scubus, a Cultist and another Banshee. Equipment. One less intelligence, more constitution and initiative. I don't really need initiative to be honest. So strength is down by four, but dex and initiative is up. So that's critical chance instead of initiative. She's got quite a lot of critical chance already, so I think we're, we're good. We can upgrade the blacksmith now. Someone with divine damage no longer has it. We can do this, which is freaking amazing. Let's go chance initiative with some evasion. Oh, I don't have this. With power.
Right, upgrade that. Okay. Equipment wise. Let's keep going. keep this stuff going up let's come back to my units here so you've got physical that Rosandra is divine so yeah you've becoming a proper beast you've got that you've got that and unholy damage for you even though I want to replace you. These don't matter. Right. We just need to speak to Orion. Uh, what are we at? 32 minutes. Meet our companions. Let's do some talking. I will speak to him last. You're still settling, I presume. I spent so much of my time as a captive, I hardly know what to do with myself. I go where I please. I speak to whom I please. Just... And that's just going and speaking. There's lots of other things to do once the hosts get boring. Just, just because I'm liberated of my role as a boy in the Whitelands doesn't mean I now rest and wither until I die. Sounds like you have something in mind. Yilin will win this war, but not without diplomacy. I want to be her diplomat. I will oversee our relationship with the other races. And where possible, will provide you counsel, that is, if you allow it. I'll do more than allow it. I'll make the preparations myself. Ormeo, I hereby appoint you as a position of Grand Diplomat. I hereby accept. Let's talk diplomacy. I need advice dealing with the other races. How to engage with unholy demons. I'm listening. The universe itself is created from a burst of fire and rage. Bethesda informed the Vanda in that way. Just as he formed the demons... Be that fire, be that rage, and they will respect you. They don't really care about the other races, to be honest. How about Greyleaf? If you ally with the second Woken, we're going to Greyleaf. My people have long haunted a grimoire there named the Tulkin. Some say it was written by Mortis, others that it was written by the Fate Hand himself. I'll be going. I'm pleased to announce our alliance with the elves is strong, suspicion remains, and should for us be well, but our efforts have succeeded. Until later. We're done. Okay, Orion. That will take us off to a new place. So at this stage, I think it's a good time to call this an episode. We're at just under 35 minutes a year before we speak to Orion and go off to Greyleaf because that's the only place we have left. Um, yeah, we'll call this one here. So thank you very much, everyone. Please like, comment, subscribe. It really, really does help me out. I'll be recording some more Disciples Liberations straight away. And uh, until then, I will see you all in the next one.